Jesus spoke about a second death. There are two types of death. Mortal death, which is when our soul is separated from our body, and spiritual death, which is when our soul is separated from God. Adam and Eve had their souls separated from God the day they ate from the forbidden fruit. That's why God kicked them out of the garden. Now, that is also why we are born spiritually dead in our sins. You are dead in your sins, and that's why Jesus said you have to be born again right now by repenting of sin and putting your faith in Jesus Christ. You will then be born again of the Spirit of God and be able to remain with God forever. If you don't do that now, during this life, you will remain separated from God forever. This is great stuff. I could make a career out of this guy. You see how clever this part is? How it doesn't require a shred of proof? And most paranoid delusions are intricate, but this is brilliant. I'm going to make a challenge for you. Do you want to debate with me live? We'll record it, post it on YouTube, make it a big event. We can even have one of those Mortal Kombat screens, you know, me on one side, you on the other. It'll be crazy, right? Let's do it. It'll be fun. Well, it'll be fun for me. But then again, that's because I'm not so stupid as to say that the Grand Canyon was formed at about five times the speed of sound. If the planet flooded like the Bible says, the Grand Canyon could have been formed in about five minutes. The Grand Canyon could have been formed in about five minutes. However, the reason I have little interest in humoring you with a debate is exemplified by these videos. Put simply, someone who has repeatedly demonstrated such a crass lack of scientific understanding as yourself is not in need of a debate, but an education. However, you shouldn't feel bad about this attribute, as it's almost pervasively true of all young Earth creationists. Let's see what gems you have for us this time. The Bible says Noah only had to bring things that breathe with their nostrils. Fish don't breathe with their nostrils, and I bet you even know that. Ah, Noah's Ark. It's almost shameless that anyone could try and defend this. But let's look at the facile point that Noah took nothing onto the Ark that didn't have nostrils. Well, sure, that would have meant that Noah wouldn't have to take any bugs on the Ark. But then again, it would have also meant the extinction of almost all insects and plant life on Earth. And, of course, the humble earthworm, and thereby ensuring that Noah and everything else on the Ark would have starved to death on a dead planet. But then again, what about the whales? They breathe through their nostrils. Shown that the nostrils are the largest creature ever to live on the Earth, the blue whale. I really would have loved to see how Noah got all the animals that breathe with their nostrils on the Ark. The Bible says Noah only had to bring things that breathe with their nostrils. Fish don't breathe with their nostrils, and I bet you even know that. So insects breathe not through their nostrils, but through their skin, so no insects either. Now, the seas get saltier at an increasing rate every year. And if you take the rate in which they're getting saltier in reverse time, about 4,400 years ago, the seas would be totally fresh water. Ah, so the water was totally fresh 4,000 years ago, eh? Well, where did these come from? These are chalk cliffs. They're known to be composed of microscopic shells of a form of creature similar to the modern phytoplankton called coccolithophores. These phytoplankton require two materials to make their calcium carbonate shells. Firstly, calcium, which is dissolved in the seawater. Secondly, carbonate, which is usually obtained from carbon dioxide from the atmosphere. The geological period of time in which these deposits were laid down is named after these chalk deposits the Latin name for chalk being Creta. In the Cretaceous period, these areas were covered with oceans, and the chalk deposits were laid down between 150 and 70 million years ago. Now comes the amusing bit. The raw materials required for coccolithophores to make chalk, or calcium carbonate, are a salt solution of the iron calcium and carbon dioxide. Now if the oceans were purely fresh water as the creationist states, then where did these calcium carbonate deposits of coccolithophores come from? Again. Jesus spoke about a second death. There are two types of death. Mortal death, which is when our soul is separated from our body. I can only assume that by death he means brain death. We've known for decades now that the only thing that causes irreversible death is the death of the brain. Once the neurochemistry goes south, it doesn't come back. However, this is the thing. Animals have brains that function in a very similar fashion to our own. Yet I somehow doubt the creationist would argue that it's impossible for animals to die as they have no souls to separate from their bodies. Next, of course, comes the obvious question. 
We know our brains make our decisions, so what's the purpose of the soul the creationist speaks of? Why do those who claim they have been born again with souls have behavioural characteristics that are indistinguishable, or worse, than those who haven't been born again with a soul, for instance, divorce rates and the such like? And spiritual death, which is when our soul is separated from God. Okay, so the creationist is now saying that we have a soul and that there's a God, and that having your soul separated from God counts as death. Um, okay. Well, I'm still struggling to see how, if God is omnipresent and omnipotent, how you can ever be separated from him. Adam and Eve had their souls separated from God the day they ate from the forbidden fruit. That's why God kicked them out of the garden. Okay, so Adam was born with his soul alive and killed it by eating forbidden fruit. So what have we learned? Well, in creationism, it's possible to kill your soul by eating. Now, that is also why we are born spiritually dead in our sins. Okay, so in creationism, it's not only possible to kill your own soul by eating, but it can also cause all the children you have to be born with dead souls. You are dead in your sins, and that's why Jesus said you have to be born again right now by repenting of sin and putting your faith in Jesus Christ. Okay, so when you're born, your soul is automatically tied to your body, but it's dead. Then when you choose for your soul to come alive, uh... How? What makes the choice? The dead soul? The biochemistry of life? Well, let's leave that for a minute and see where this goes. You will then be born again of the Spirit of God and be able to remain with God forever. So your soul is born into a piece of biochemical machinery thanks to your ancestors not being picky enough about their diet. And now, if you manage to get your soul to come alive via some undescribed process, then you get to become a part of God. If you don't do that now, during this life, you will remain separated from God forever. And if you don't obey the creationist's fantasy, then his fantasy will punish you for your disobedience. But of course, the funny thing is the creationist's fantasy would automatically kill the souls of all the babies who haven't chose to have their souls born yet. That's a pretty unpleasant fantasy. But now let's compare what we know, and can prove with the physical evidence, to the creationist's fantasy. If you don't do that now, during this life, you will remain separated from God forever. This is great stuff. I could make a career out of this guy. You see how clever this part is? How it doesn't require a shred of proof? And most paranoid delusions are intricate, but this is brilliant. The Bible says Noah only had to bring things that breathe with their nostrils. 4,400 years ago, the seas would be totally fresh water.